Now for this quick reminder, we will be taking your calls during the next hour at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. And for more on these disturbing developments, we're pleased to be joined by the former assistant director of the FBI, Ron Hosko. Ron is now the president of the Law Enforcement Legal Defense Fund. Also joining us tonight via Skype, former CIA analyst Fred Flights. Fred, now the senior vice president for policy and programs at the Center for Security Policy. He is also the author of the brand new book, Obama Bomb, a dangerous and growing national security fraud. Uh, gentlemen, we thank you both for your time tonight on Newsmax Prime. And the White House was quick to condemn this morning's attack and also explained what President Obama has done to fight the spread of ISIS. Let's look and listen. The terrorist attacks uh, happening on foreign soil are horrific and are unfortunate. And that is why the president has taken uh, a leadership role in making sure that he's summoning, I think now 67 uh, international partners uh, to build a coalition to degrade and ultimately defeat ISIL. That uh, effort remains ongoing, it remains robust, uh, and it remains um, a top goal of this president uh, for, for the remainder of his term in office. Fred Flights, your reaction to the White House reaction? I think we're all tired of these mealy mouth responses to these terrorist atrocities. There was no mention of radical Islam, that ISIS was behind this. The White House still doesn't get it. Hillary Clinton doesn't get it. As you know, ISIS wasn't even mentioned last night during the Democratic National Convention. Uh, we have to face the fact that this is a radical ideology at war with Western civilization, radical Islam. Uh, let me turn to you, Ron Hosko. Uh, in your opinion, has the Obama administration, through the efforts of the Department of Homeland Security, done anything to really and truly secure the United States from the threat we saw so graphically earlier today in France. J.D., our borders are far too porous. This government, this administration, um, despite who they escort out of the country, is, is known for having massive holes in our net that allows more people to flow in unchecked, um, and, and it is well known. And that's why we are having this, this influx of illegal aliens, uh, because they have heard the rhetoric of this administration. They've seen the inaction of this administration. They see and sense weakness. And we are filling up with people who we don't know who they are. We don't know their backgrounds. And, and it, makes, it puts us at greater risk. Gentlemen, as you might imagine, the Republican nominee for president, Donald Trump, on the stump, I believe, of the Veterans for Foreign Wars this morning in Charlotte had quite a bit to say about our national security and foreign policy. And here is some of what Mr. Trump said. We need to change our foreign policy to focus on defeating and destroying ISIS, a word you didn't hear last night at the Democrat convention. You didn't hear it. They don't want to talk about it. Because in a very true way, they really established ISIS because of weakness. Fred Flights, let me turn to you. You hear Donald Trump setting up a rhetorical rationalization, and, and I don't mean that in a pejorative sense, but saying things have got to change. And uh, the question I began the broadcast with was this, is this the new normal? Wh what about that, Fred? Well, first of all, Mr. Trump is right. ISIS was born on President Obama and Hillary Clinton's watch. There's simply no doubt about that. I'm worried this is becoming the new normal unless we have leadership in this country that's going to stand up to ISIS and eliminate it. ISIS is not afraid of this administration. Iran's not afraid of this administration. And I think under Hillary Clinton presidency, this threat will get significantly worse. Let's go to the phones at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Out west to the great Pacific Northwest and Seattle. That's where Sherry is on the phone. Hi, Sherry. Welcome to Newsmax Prime. Hello, Sherry. Do we have you? 
Well, we'll work to restore uh, Sherry. Let me turn to something else. Uh, and it was the response from the Vatican earlier today uh, dealing with the attack on a Roman Catholic Church. Here is the word from Vatican City. This unfortunately is just the latest in a, in a string of attacks that have affected us in, in recent days really uh, with great horror. The Pope has been informed, he participates obviously in, in the suffering of those and, and the strongest condemnation of any kind of hatred. And while that is the word from the Holy See, it was worth noting the bishop for the area in France where the attack took place said there were three victims, the, uh, the priest and the two Islamic perpetrators. Perhaps there is a broader theological note that the bishop hoped to sound, but to my ear, I must tell you it is not the time for compassion. Instead, it is the time to utilize the sword to protect the right. And here you see a picture of the priest who perished in a most horrific fashion earlier today. Ron Hosko, obviously we're not here to engage in theology, but in terms of protecting houses of worship, what do you expect the response will be here in the United States? J.D., I don't expect it's going to change much from the posture that we see right now in the county where I live. You'll see police uh, outside of the churches directing traffic, uh, but I don't see a strong police presence ramping up to protect our houses of worship in America. Um, it's, it's just a sad reality that, that we are so free, uh, that our borders are, are open enough that our empowering individuals in America to speak their First Amendment rights um, and, and to exercise their associations freely, uh, frankly, increases our risk. Uh, it increases the opportunity for others who want to attack us and engage in this sort of barbarism. And we've seen from ISIS and we've heard from them that no one is safe from their reach. They celebrate the, the barbaric uh, execution of a Catholic priest in, in France. They, they don't regard children and innocents uh, and women and children as being collateral to this. They're prime targets in the in this sick world of ISIS. Let's go to the phones at one eight seven seven Newsmax out to my old stomping grounds, a place I know pretty well. Camp Verde, Arizona, is where Clark joins us. Hi, Clark. Hey, JD, how you doing, old buddy? Good to have yeah, you on the line, Clark. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Good to have you. Tell us uh, your viewpoint tonight, sir. The viewpoint is on foreign policy. We've already seen through the. The, the short history of what Hillary Clinton and our president has done to, um, to amass the terrorism effect on this world. Prior to his administration, this was not that great an effect. Well, there still were some problems, Clark, in terms of securing our border. Indeed, I look back at that as a bipartisan failing, as we see Hillary Clinton there uh, testifying uh, or shaking the hands of those from the Select Committee on Benghazi. Fred Flights, let me return to you. You hear what Clark has to say. You heard uh, Ron talking about law enforcement and our stance here. But there, there could be assertive steps taken to reduce Raqqa, the ISIS capital, to rubble. And yet this administration won't do it. We've got about a minute 30 left, sir. Go ahead. I, I think the administration has been reluctant to do it. It's interesting. There's actually talk right now that there may be a, an ill-considered plan to accelerate attacks on Raqqa, possibly to influence the outcome of this presidential election by the Obama administration. I'm worried that's going to put lives at risk. If we're going to attack Raqqa, we need to attack it with overwhelming force. We also need a good plan that's not a rushed plan. But to date, we've had no plan, and that's allowed ISIS to flourish. And let me turn to Ron Hosko for something else that's going on. Fred mentioned a political dimension. There's something going on tonight in Philadelphia where the mothers of, quote, victims of police shootings are showing up. Ron Hosko is a law enforcement officer. Uh, your reaction to that, sir? 30 seconds remain. I, I think these uh, speakers are going to deflect from a, an, an obvious reality that some of these mothers lost children in police encounters 
because they resisted the police. They fought the police. In the case of one, Leslie McSpadden, Michael Brown's mother, there's probably much she could tell us about the child rearing of one Michael Brown who attacked a cop, a uniformed cop in his car and tried to take his weapon. So there's probably much to learn. I don't think we're going to learn it from his mother's mouth tonight. I feel for her for losing her son, but her son was a criminal. He was a thug. He attacked a police officer. And so this is a deflection of reality of crime in America. And we will have to leave it there. Ron Hosko and Fred Flights, gentlemen, we appreciate your time. Up next, a Hillary delegate at the Democrat convention. Stay tuned.